الحمد لله الحمد لله فاطر الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم وملقي التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الأكرم ذو الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم وكتاب المحكم خير ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فنصلي ونسلم ونبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير هدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدث في الدين بدعة وكل بدعة في الدين ضلالة أوصيكم وإياي بتقوى الله حسن عباته all praises due to Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, and peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger. He who Allah guides will never be misguided, and he who Allah misguides will never be guided. We begin today's khutbah with a young boy at school who would constantly get angry throughout the day and say and do things that were inappropriate. He would allow his tongue to say things that were wrong and allow his hands to do things that were wrong. So after many warnings, this young boy, he was called to the principal's office and his father was called in. So his father took him and he told him, for every time you are angry, for every word that you said that was wrong, for every action that you did was wrong, he went to the garage and grabbed a hammer and some nails. And he told him, I want you to go to the fence for every moment that you have made a mistake. I wanted you to hammer one nail into the fence. So on the first day, the boy hammered many nails. And the second day, again, he hammered many nails. And the third day, again. After a few days, the boy got tired of hammering nails. So he began thinking every time he got angry, if I do or say something, I'm going to have to hammer nails. So he began to hold himself accountable. So the number of nails that he would have to hammer in got smaller and smaller and smaller. Until one day he came to his father and said, Dad, I, have, I did not get angry today. I said nothing wrong today. Father smiled and he said, come my son. He took his son to the backyard and he told him, son, for every day that you did not get angry, I want you to pull one nail out. 
The sun continued, weeks went by. And after weeks, the son had finally pulled out the final nail. So he calls his father again proud. Comes to his father and says, Father, I've completed it. There are no more nails in the fence. The father goes and takes him to the backyard and asks him, what do you see? He, see, he says, I see a fence filled with holes. He said, yes, my son. Because every time you harm someone with your words or with your actions, you strike them and they feel an instant pain. But even after that pain has gone because time has passed, it has still left a mark, similarly to the mark in the fence. The reason I began my khutbah today, many a times we say and we do things unconsciously, without knowing. Thinking, it's just a small word, why does it matter? Oh, I'm just cutting my brother off before we go out to masjid, why does it matter? But we have to realize that these actions impact others. And it's interesting to say that because about approximately one week ago, a little over a week ago, many of us were fasting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped us from what is halal. He told us the thing that we love to do, things that we must do to stay alive, like eating and drinking, to not do it during certain hours of the day. And there was a purpose for that, a purpose for our fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامَ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Siyam was prescribed to you, similarly like the people before you, for one reason and one reason only. So that alas, you may attain taqwa. So that alas, you may be God conscious. You may be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching. Yes, many of us today are no longer children. And yes, even if we are children, more likely than not, our parents, our fathers will not make us hammer nails into a wall or into the fence. But the impact that every single one of us has lives on. And we must realize even though your father isn't watching, your boss isn't watching, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching. And there's a beautiful hadith. The ulama have said this is amongst the most important ahadith in our lives. <coughs> the hadith from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتْ Be God conscious wherever you are. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you no matter where you are. No matter where you hide. And he says, وَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهَا Islam is a realistic religion. We know that we are weak. We're called insan, from nisyan, from forgetfulness. So we know we are going to make mistakes. So the Prophet ﷺ says, if you make a mistake, follow that mistake with a good deed. Right away, follow that mistake with a good deed. And he concludes the hadith by saying, وَخَالَقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ and treat people with excellent manners. Why did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or what is the hikmah behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam starting off with taqwa and concluding with husnul khuluq? One of the hikam, one of the wisdoms is to explain to each and every one of us that your salah, your siyam, yes, it is for you, but what value is your salah if you treat others poorly? What value is your siyam if you treat others poorly? You hear on the manabir, on the minbar, inna salatanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Almost every khatib will say it. Truly, prayer will stop you from doing in, unacceptable actions. So the question becomes if my salah, if my taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't stopping me from treating people badly, then what is the value of that prayer? It doesn't mean don't pray. No, continue praying. But ask yourself, what is the fruit of my salah? What is the fruit of my ibadah? It should be in your husn al-khuluq. 
And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the best of that. And he gave great rewards for those that had husn al-khuluq. He said, أَنَدْرُونَ أَكْثَرُ مَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةِ أَكْثَرُ مَا يُدْخِلُ النَّاسُ الْجَنَّةِ Excuse me. Do you know what two actions or what actions will bring people closest to Jannah? He says in a rhetorical, answering his own question, he says, تَقْوَى اللَّهِ وَحُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ Having God consciousness and treating people well. And another narration, he says, أَقْرَبُكُمْ مِنِّي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَحْسَنُكُمْ خُلُقًا the, most close, the people that are closest to me on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst one of those people. It says the people that are closest to me on the Day of Judgment are the ones that have the most excellent of manners. So now the question becomes to all of us. How are our manners? Assess yourself. Like Sayyidina Umar would always say, حَاسِبُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ قَبْلَ أَن تُحَاسَبُوا Hold yourself accountable before you are accounted for. No one will be able to assess your actions or your manners better than yourself. Did I say something today that was inappropriate? Did I do something today that was inappropriate? The Prophet wasallam holds it even to a higher standard. He says, أَفْضُرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِسْلَامًا The best of believers in Islam. Logically, what would it be? Al-Sawwam, Al-Qawwam. The one that prays all night, the one that fasts all day. But he says, أَفْضُلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِسْلَامًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا وَخَيْرُكُمْ قَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ The highest rank of people. The people that are the best of people in Islam. Are not the ones that pray. Yes, prayer is a sign of your righteousness. But the true sign is your manners. And he Prophet gave at the end of, a khut- uh, end of the hadith, خيركم, خيركم The best of you is the best to your families. Why? Because you can lie to all of us. You can come and be Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the first of. But at home you're Abu Jahl. You can't lie to your wife. After a long day of work, where you've held your tongue all day because your boss is watching, how are you at home? How are you with your spouse? How are you with your children? How are you with your siblings? And similarly, sisters, after a long day with the children, how are you with your husband? How are your manners? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have the best of manners. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات عملنا. One of the scholars that I listened to was telling a story. He's saying one day he went to France, and a Jewish woman spoke to him. And this Jewish woman came to him and he, she said, "I read the Sirah of your Prophet, and I am confused by one particular scenario." She says that your prophet had a neighbor, a Jewish neighbor, that every day would put garbage in front of his house or harm him in one way or another. Until one day he did not. And the prophet, your prophet, he's speaking, saying your prophet went and visited that neighbor. And he realized that this neighbor, his son was ill. So the pro- your prophet told this boy to become Muslim, to make shahada before he passes away. And this boy looks to his father and his father nods and this boy becomes a Muslim. And so does his father. And she says, the reason I was confused by this story is your prophet didn't negotiate. The narration doesn't say your prophet was giving him evidence and proof. He just asked him to become Muslim and he did. And I believe, this Jewish woman saying, and I believe that the only reason this boy and his father became Muslim is because they saw characteristics from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
that when they were asked to become Muslim, it was easy. How could this man not be Muhammad, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So she asked this scholar, she says, do you think if the non-Muslim neighbors were asked to become Muslim, by looking just at your actions, do you think they would be Muslim? Let's think about it for one second on our level. If we asked our neighbors in the medical building, or our neighbors at ANW, after what they saw from us in Ramadan, do you think they would be Muslim? The answer is for us to decide. Whether we like it or not, every single one of us represents Islam. And Islam, in the first of generations, was spread through Husnul Khulq. Many of, this, many of the Westerners want to claim that Islam was spread through the sword, and that is a lie. The greatest population of Muslims is in Indonesia, where not a single battle was fought. The only thing that happened was husnul khuluq when it comes to business. So as an ambassador of Islam, how is your manners? How are your actions? Will you help people come to Islam or push people away? Now the question becomes to all of us, what's the reward? What do I get for being someone with husnul khuluq? The Prophet ﷺ gives many rewards. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inni Zaimun fi baitin, it's a long hadith, fi baitin fi rabadi al jannah, and then he goes fi wasati al jannah, and the last one he goes, Inni Zaimun fi baitin fi a'la al jannah. I am a guarantor of a, of a mansion, of a house in the highest levels of jannah. For who? Liman hasuna khuluqa. For the one with excellent manners. The reward is being at the highest levels of Jannah. And the reward I said earlier, أَقْرَبُكُمْ مِنِّي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The Prophet said, the closest of you to me on the Day of Judgment. أَحْسَنُكُمْ أَخْلَاقًا Are the best of you in manners. And Allah, the Prophet said, again, another hadith, أَحَبُّ عِبَادِ اللَّهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا The most beloved of people, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones with the most excellent of manners. So now it becomes what is our homework? Is it too late for us? And the answer, as long as we are breathing, it is never too late. So what is our homework? First, there is glad tidings. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al-ilmu bit-ta'allum wal-hilmu bit-ta'allum وَمَنْ تَحَرَّ وَمَنْ تَحَرَّ الْخَيْرَ يُعْطَاهِ Ilm, knowledge, is with learning. Meaning if you give effort, you will receive. And hilm, forbearance, being, having excellent in character, having forbearance, is by being forbearant. By holding yourself accountable and holding yourself to a higher standard. And working on yourself every single day, every opportunity that you can. And the Prophet concludes the hadith and he says, And whoever seeks out righteousness, whoever seeks out excellence, they will be given. So are we going to seek out excellence? Number two, read or learn the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And there is three ta'keeds, three guarantees, proofs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by saying, that's verily, truly, O Muhammad, you are on the greatest of manners. You are on the most excellent of manners. So if we want to learn, who better than to learn from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If we learn his seerah, we'll learn similarities to our lives. And see how he treated the young, the old. See how he treated his own family. And alas, maybe we can be similar to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number three, something that we can take before we leave today. Is don't forget to smile. 
is when you see your brother, some of the simplest of actions, is smile to your brother before you leave. That is an action of husn al khuluq. As your brother is leaving from the masjid today, smile to everyone you know and you don't know. And I've said it on the minbar before, giving salam to those that you know and you don't know will allow us to enter Jannah. So give the opportunity as you're leaving the masjid today. Smile to your brother and say salam to him. It doesn't take moments of your day. Number four, similarly to the child, the boy that started this whole khutbah, the Prophet Muhammad, a man came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, awsini. Advise me, O Messenger of Allah. La taghdab. Do not get angry. Two words. One simple, well not simple, one action. Very difficult, but the reward is great. If we stop ourselves from getting angry more times than not, our khuluq will be excellent. And lastly, hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Hold yourself accountable before you are accounted for. The only person that will know if you have husn al-khuluq or not is yourself. So every night before you sleep, ask yourself, how did I do today? Did I say something that I shouldn't have? Did I react in a way that I would not be happy about? Did I say something to someone that I will regret on the day of judgment? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to replay it in front of me, would I be happy with my action or would I not? Think about it on the day of judgment where you stand. Everyone is watching. Everyone can see what you are doing. Will you be proud of that individual that you are seeing? Or will you say, yeah, hasra. Oh, how sad. And, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to have the highest levels of Jannah. And allow all of us to have husn al-khuluq in all our actions. اللهم مهدينا في من هديت وعافينا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت اللهم مهدينا وهدي بنا واجعلنا سابا لمن اهتدى اللهم مهدينا وهدي بنا واجعلنا سابا لمن اهتدى عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وينع عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واستغفروه يغفر لكم وأقم الصلاة هذا عم حسين عم حسين مفضلك الله <تصفيق> 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 الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم راعون 
والذين هم على صلواتهم يحافظون أولئك هم الوارثون الذين يرثون الفردوس هم فيها خالدون الله أكبر سمع الله من حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ طِينٍ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُّطْفَةَ عَلَقَةً فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَةَ مُضْغَةً فَخَلَقْنَا الْمُضْغَةَ عِظَامًا فكسونا العظام لحما ثم أنشأناه خلقا آخر فتبارك الله أحسن الخالقين ثم إنكم بعد ذلك لميتون ثم إنكم يوم القيامة تبعثون الله أكبر سمع الله من حميدة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله سهر العظيم سهر